In terms of the response of the judiciary and the Catholic Church to these Irish Newfoundland women, uh, I think that, you know, it would be remiss to try to pretend that there were no pressures coming from these areas. Uh, obviously, these women were living their li lives on the ground in, in fishing communities, but, but, you know, that stuff is out there. And it does make its way along, uh, you know, through comments or through per perhaps the increasing incursions of the judiciary and the church into the area. Uh, but having said that, uh, the magistrates who are on the ground, okay, now when you've got, you've got the crowd in St. John's, which is the capital city, and they're doing their thing. But, you know, the face of the law in all these communities, for the most part, would be the magistrates, and they're dealing with a lot of this stuff on the fly. On the ground, they're not pushing these women into private space. Uh, as I've mentioned, they're very sort of, uh, you know, they're the, the women are, are treated like men in, in the uh, local uh, legal system. Uh, they are, you know, they're, they're welcome to be petitioners. There they're, they're are, um, you know, the, you can see a quite lively presence in terms of the, the wills uh, that, that are, are on the books. Uh, they they, you can almost hear a heavy eye roll occasionally when something comes up before the magistrate in terms of uh, some of the local women who may be repeat offenders. But really, you know, you're looking at no jail sentences, small fines, if anything, go on. And in terms of matrimonial matters, as I've mentioned, you don't see them, uh, you don't see the magistrates pushing women back into abusive situations. They let them go, they recognize the reality of a, a, a separation, and they, they give the, the children to the, the woman, they ask for maintenance from the, the men folk, and they track them down too. When, when, uh, when husbands disappear, uh, the magistrates would you know, send off the, the deputy sheriff to, to track them down and, and uh, seize their wages from fishing employers. So they were serious about it. Um, so why? why? Why this discrepancy then? Because, I mean, obviously their own women folk they're trying to get into the house and, and have them respectable. And I think it's because, uh, as I say, most of these magistrates were merchants or they were members of merchant families. And the merchants were very reliant on the fish and the fish oil that fishing households produced for them. That was, it was the only game in town, as I've said before. So this is the primary industry. Uh, it's important to have women in public spaces doing the work that is required to maintain this fishing household that's functioning very well. So I think that the magistrates are very reluctant to impose, to try to impose this, this sort of middle class ideal of respectability on these women, because it doesn't make sense for them to do that. They know how desperately the households need these women in, in that public space. So, but the Catholic Church, now that's different. Catholic Church is late getting to Newfoundland. Newfoundland had a, a penal regime that was similar to that in Ireland, except that it wasn't steadily enforced. But every, every time a governor was sent out, the governor was told to enforce the penal code as he saw fit. Uh, so some did and some didn't. Some of them were, you know, quite insistent. There was one in the mid-1750s that was burning houses and sending Irish back to, to Newfoundland, and uh, to Ireland rather. Uh, but others just sort of morally, mo mostly just sort of let things tick along. But uh, the, the Catholic Church couldn't actually operate uh, fully in Newfoundland until the late 18th century. So, uh, that's when you really see the priests starting to arrive and, and operate in full daylight. I mean, they've been around and they're, they're being shepherded under uh, cover to, from one house to another and, and that kind of thing. But now they're, they're able to operate fully. And the first priest who comes to uh, the southern Avalon, his name was Father Yor, and he was absolutely shocked to see that women were living there who had four husbands, all of them alive. 
And this was just, when I, when I did my research, I discovered that there were all these very informal family arrangements. And you know, you moved in with somebody and if you got along, that was fine. And if you didn't, well, that's fine. You just parted ways. Uh, you know, women did some of the marriages and fishing captains did some of the marriages. The, the priests hadn't been allowed to, to, to marry people. And so that, you know, and if it worked out fine, if it didn't, everybody, but as long as everybody, the, you know, everybody was okay as long as children of the relationship were looked after and moved into some other family arrangement, people didn't mind. So you'll see women that, uh, with children with, you know, four and five uh, surnames and you, you can just sort of speculate that this, you know, <laughs> this was her sort of moving for, and you know, not surprising too, because again, you know, that initial transience of the male population, I mean, they were coming and going. So the priest was quite shocked by this, as you can imagine. Uh, there was, I would say, um, you know, uh, the notion uh, that, that, you know, woman was either temptress Eve, she was a seductress, or uh, she was, you know, uh, the Virgin Mary. Now, those were the two options for women, and there wasn't any gray area in between. So any woman who sort of moved outside of that ideal uh, was, you know, really spoken out against, uh, you know, from the altar and, and ostracized by the priest, uh, cut off from the sacraments, although the community was like, what business has he got to do that? And the community would be very accepting of, of uh, illegitimate births, and I hate that term, but for want of a better one, and would, you know, t take, take any of the kids into the family. So, uh, but you can see the, the church trying to, you know, bring them into respectability. They're, they're also, um, uh, you know, you, you can see various letters and, and, and uh, sermons in which, uh, you know, bishops are saying now, you know, we've got to keep our women folks safe. And, oh, there was a riot down in St. Mary's. Oh, we can't have the women involved in that now. And just think about, you know, my goodness, and the the leaders are still out in the woods and they could come in and, you know, your, your women are not safe while they're, they're out. And the, these women would take on anybody, I can assure you. But, you know, that whole sort of discourse of the frail, dependent woman, uh, you know, women should be like the little Irish mother, you know, by, by the hearth, spinning and knitting the socks. And they did lots of that, too. But, you know, that was her role in life and to be that sort of sp spiritual compass for her family. And so you do see the pressure from the priests and the bishops, but it doesn't mesh with the reality of women's lives at all. So they continue to press on. Uh, they continue with their uh, informal belief system as well. And I think that really uh, was a thorn in the side of, of the Catholic Church, uh, you know, because that's sort of competition in terms of mediating, you know, between the natural and the supernatural world. So that, that was quite an issue. But I'll tell you now, when I was growing up, way, way back, way long time ago, but when I was growing up that long ago, there were still kids that I hung around with who had like uh, uh, blessed bread in their pockets whenever they went out, out of, you know, their gardens or lanes to protect them from the fairies. Uh, you know, so, that sort of influence continued because women's place in the fishery continued. That very strong contribution that they were making continued until after, after Confederation in 1949 when the Canadian government decided that they, they needed to modernize the industry and suddenly there was no place for women anymore. Uh, men would go off in these offshore vessels, uh, you know, chasing the fish, another mistake for a story for another day. And women were permitted low paying jobs in, in plants, but really that sort of very powerful place that they had had uh, was gone. And yeah, that makes a huge difference.